Hey, this is Joe from The Recording Revolution. Today we're going to go back to the basics. I like to do this once in a while because the fundamentals are really important. No matter how good you get at whatever sport you play, you're always drilling the fundamentals and we're going to do that around here as well. I started making YouTube videos back in 2009 to answer questions that I would receive over the phone as a salesperson at Sweetwater. Somebody would buy an audio interface and start learning how to record and say, hey, how do you set up a reverb track? And I shot videos to answer those questions so I could send them off to watch those videos to show them how to do the thing. That's really what started Home Studio Corner for me. Um, but I think it's important that we don't just continue going down the trail of more and more advanced stuff, uh, but that we hammer the basics every now and then. So today we're going to talk about phantom power, what it is, what you need to know about it, and how it works. But before we do, if you are getting started with recording, maybe you don't even have your equipment yet, I've put together a gear guide that can show you my top picks for what I think you need now to get started and some of the things you can save until later. Uh, there's five things you need now, and then there's other stuff you can add as you gain experience and confidence in your abilities. But you can have that guide for free. Just go to recordingrevolution.com slash gear. First, let's talk about types of microphones. There are basically, it's a little oversimplification, but there's basically three types of microphones you'll see in a home studio. The first are dynamic microphones. These are typically the most cost effective. This is a Shure SM57. Uh, and then there are ribbon microphones like this uh, fat head from Cascade. And then there are condenser microphones. The one I'm speaking into right now is a Personas PX1. This is a K87 from Roswell Pro Audio. Uh, these are probably the most common that you see in studios, but don't overlook ribbons and dynamics. So what are the difference? They're, they're kind of, you can kind of lump them into two categories. Ribbons and dynamics don't need phantom power and they have a lower output and they tend to have a little bit of a darker sound, generally speaking. Condensers, however, don't work unless you power them, and the way you power them is through a thing called phantom power. And what makes condensers so nice is they tend to have a wider frequency response, they tend to pick up a lot more than dynamics. Doesn't make them better necessarily, it's just a different thing, uh, and it's why you see them, if you can only have one microphone, I'd suggest a large diaphragm condenser mic like this. Okay, so you're using a condenser microphone, but there's no sound because you haven't turned on phantom power. How does that work anyway? So phantom power, it's a really Really cool technology. Kudos to whoever invented it. But the power for the microphone comes through the microphone cable. So there are some microphones that have their own power supply, but for the most part, a typical home studio condenser microphone gets its power from the microphone cable itself, which means the microphone preamp is sending phantom power. The thing about that is it's not on by default usually, so you typically have to push a button to engage phantom power. And that button is usually labeled 48V, which stands for 48 volts, plus 48V. I suppose it could be called phantom power, or maybe there's a letter P there, but typically I see it as 48. And you have to press that button to engage, send the 48 volts to the microphone to power it up so that it is passing signal. So if you have a condenser microphone that's making no sound, my first guess is you don't have phantom power on, turn it on and you should get sound. And that's really all you need to know to work with condenser microphones. Just turn on phantom power and you should have audio. If you're curious, if you look inside most condensers, um, the bigger ones, you can see usually there's like a gold disc in there. That's called the diaphragm. That's the thing that vibrates, that generates signal that becomes the audio signal that you're hearing right now. You're hearing this little diaphragm vibrating and that's the audio that you're hearing for my voice right now. And to do that job, it's it's something like there's a there's a, there's the diaphragm, and then maybe there's a charged plate, and the difference between them, um, created by electromagnetic forces, is what creates the signal. You don't have to have an engineering degree to use it, but that's what's happening. The, that whole diaphragm mechanism doesn't do anything without power. Compared to like an SM57 or even a ribbon microphone. They're just, it's just a hunk of wire wrapped around a magnet. And that does its own kind of, it passively generates signal. 
uh, which is why dynamic microphones tend to be a lot quieter. If you plugged both of these in and put them on my voice at the same setting on your mic pre, this one's going to be quieter. It doesn't make it bad, it just it's quieter. It does mean that these tend to handle loud sources really well because they're generally quieter, um, but because it's more of a passive device, you think about like passive and active pickups in like bass guitars. The active pickup typically has a wider frequency range and is a lot louder. Kind of the same thing here. This is passive. This is active. Uh, with this one, with a with an active bass, typically you have a battery in the bass itself. With this, you're running power to it from the preamp. Now, there are a couple things to consider with phantom power and your microphones. First, make sure you've got your speakers and your headphones turned off or turned down before you engage phantom power or before you turn it off. It tends to create a pretty loud pop that can be uncomfortable at best and damaging to your speakers or headphones at the worst case scenario. So make sure they're turned off before you engage and disengage. Um, also, I like to turn my phantom power off when I'm not using the microphone. Um, I don't know for a fact that that's good for the mic, but that's just a practice that I do when I'm done shooting videos, for example, for the day. I turn it off and push the mic over there and it stays off until I need it again. And then finally, there are some interfaces like this, uh, this is an audio interface that has two microphone inputs, and it has a single 48-volt button on there. That means that when I push that button, it sends phantom power out all of the microphone connections. So if I've got multiple mics connected, they're both, on this one there's two output, there's two microphone inputs, they're both receiving phantom power. That's fine in most cases. If you have two condensers, obviously that's great. If you have a condenser and a dynamic, it won't hurt the dynamic to send phantom power to it. It just doesn't do anything with it, so you're good. The, the only time to be a little concerned is with ribbon microphones. It's possible, and again, I don't know the inner electronic workings of these, but it's possible that phantom power could damage a ribbon mic. Some ribbon microphones are actually phantom powered because they have like built-in electronics to goose the signal before it goes out, so those are fine. Um, and I've heard from some people, reputable sources, that it actually isn't bad for the, for the ribbon microphone. It just, if they're not wired correctly or if something's not quite right, it could damage the actual little metal ribbon in there that generates the sound. So I tend to, rule of thumb, not send phantom power to this when I'm using it. Um, funny story, when I was in college, we had a set of Coles ribbon microphones that we could check out for sessions. Um, and they're, I forget how much they are, but they're a couple thousand dollar ribbon mics. And they warned us, don't send phantom power to these because it will break them. And I was in one session for half the night and then we moved to a different studio for the second half of the session because you booked them in four hour blocks. And when we moved to the other one, when I plugged the microphones in, I didn't realize phantom power was still on, on whatever preamp I was using. So I freaked out. I thought I just made like a two, four thousand dollar mistake. Turns out they were fine. So um, maybe it can ruin it, but apparently if they're wired okay, you're good. But just just know, keep phantom power off as a general rule. Only turn it on when you need it and then turn it back off when you're done. Okay, that's it. If you have friends who are getting into audio and they don't understand things like this, save this video, send it to them so I can explain it and you don't have to. Thanks for watching. If you'd like a copy of my free gear guide to show you my recommendations of where to get started, there's a million options out there of things to buy. I show you the ones that I would recommend. Go to recordingrevolution.com slash gear and you can download that for free. Thanks for watching. See ya.